Okay, so this next video is going to talk you through how to conduct a Spearman's rank using Google Sheets. Spearman's rank is an incredibly useful statistical test um, which tells us about the relationship between two different variables or two different sets of data. Uh, um, so it can tell us how strongly those, uh, that those data sets correlate um, and it can also tell us whether that the kind of direction of that correlation, whether it's kind of positive or or negative. Um, so yeah, it was a really, really useful thing to do to see if, you know, one set um, influences the other. Now, um, the, the bigger the sample, as is true of most um, statistical tests, the bigger the sample we're applying it to, the, the better and the more accurate the outcome. But what I always like to do, and I think it's good, um, good practice when we're doing uh, Spearman's rank or statistical test is the first kind of come up with my hypothesis. So what is a statement I essentially want to test? So we've got some questions here. What is the relationship between death toll and, fun and financial cost of storms? So my hypothesis might be that the greater the death toll or the higher the death toll, the higher the financial cost. Um, so I guess I'm making the assumption there that if it's been something that's killed lots and lots of people, it's likely to have also um, damaged lots of property, um, end up with lots of insurance claims, that sort of thing as well. So, you know, a high magnitude event damages lots of property and also kills lots of people. So that's um, that's the reason for my hypothesis there. All right, so um, and there's a few more. So what we need to do first is kind of create those hypotheses, those statements we're going to test. And then ultimately, when we finish, once we've come up with our values, we've calculated our values, we will um, be able to accept or reject, so we'll say whether we were right or wrong, um, those statements. Okay, so uh, in terms of what we want to do with this data, the idea is we will fill in these with our kind of Spearman's rank values for these different um, sets of data, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a look on the significance table to say for the number of the, the, the value we get uh, and the, the size of the sample, is it a significant relationship? Okay, i.e., what um, percentage chance is there that that is? Um, is a fluke or is or is uh, a meaningful relationship okay uh, but we'll come back to that at the end so for this we go onto our table uh, i've already produced a um a new sheet here spearman's rank um now it's a little bit more this is quite a bit more involved so we're going to go to our raw data for countries okay you can see i've already selected the ones i want there so i've got just storms turned on at the moment um I've got all the countries turned on because actually this is, I'm looking at whether storms impact the, the death and the damage. So uh, I'm not looking at it by country. I could I could group it by country, but I'm gonna increase my data set by looking at, at all four countries in this case. Um, so I want, to, I want the occurrence, the total deaths and the total cost of damage. So I set those four, those columns. Um, Command C to copy it, then I can move across to my Spearman's Rank tab um, and I can paste that data. Oh, I've pressed the wrong, wrong button. Sorry, let's go back and do that again. More data country. Oh, so it's highlighting just that one. Didn't want that one. One, two, three. Command C. Back to Spearman's Rank. Command V. Okay, so you notice I've um, I've actually not posted them on this top row because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a heading um, so that I know this is my storms. Okay, uh, and you'll notice how so it goes across a lot. Right now, once I've done that, um, I've got my data. I need to start formatting this. So I need to right click on this tab B and I need to insert a column. Okay, I need to do the same here. Uh, and I'm just going to space that one out so I get the full thing. Now, this is going to become my rank. All right. And what I need to do for this test is I need to um, rank the data. Okay. So essentially, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to rank the data. I'm then going to calculate the difference, I'm going to call D, between the rank, the rank values or rank scores. Um, I'm then going to square that. What, what, what the reason for doing that is it um, removes any negative numbers, uh, which would change the, the outcome of the test. Um, 
and then I'm going to need the eventually I'm going to need the, the total or the sum of the differences squared. And I'm going to be putting that into my into my equation. Okay, and I'll come back onto that equation in a minute. But um, again, using Google Sheets and spreadsheets for this makes this so much quicker than doing it by hand. This is a is a pretty big um, data set. I've got a sample of 167. Remember, we started one down for that. Um, so it's a you know it's a sizable, so uh, yeah, very, very big big sample um, for us to be looking at. Now, what I am going to do um, to tidy this up because I don't there's some potential um, misleading information here. I'm going to delete the columns that have zeros or blanks because I don't believe that there was a storm that killed 135 people that caused no. Uh, economic impact all right and I, I that's that's to do with how the data was collected and if i was to plot it as zero it's really going to skew my relationship um because look i can see from this one above that you know this one killed 37 and cost you know, 59 um 59 000, sorry 597 000, sorry uh in damages whereas this one killed more but but the impact less now i am making an assumption here it's it's, it's an assumption that I think is worth making, um, but you know this is why methods tables and stuff are so important. Because if if someone was to, was to do the same statistical test but was to do this part differently, make a different assumption, and maybe say, do you know what? Maybe it did cause no deaths. Maybe these people were on a beach and it didn't cause any damage. Um, I think that's unlikely, but but maybe that's the assumption they make and they make they read it differently. Um, it would be important to have that recorded in the methods table. Um, and maybe having the raw data in the appendix of a report so that people could kind of see why you came up with that assumption. So I haven't done it for all of them, but um, you get the idea. I need to delete all of the zeros or blanks so that um, so it doesn't skew, skew the data in a way that I don't want it to and um, valid for the assumption that I'm gonna make that if it killed people, it cost it, there was a financial implication financial cost okay so that's that, that's enough we get the general idea right so to do the ranking here's how i do it first of all equals then i type rank okay now it's quite important we get this in the right way then i need to open my brackets okay, then i click on the data i want to know where it falls in in kind of what order it comes um so for this it's this one then i put a comma in okay then i want to select the whole set of data Okay, and then I'm gonna click a comma again, and then I'm gonna click zero. And what that's telling me is I want it from kind of um, the smallest to largest, and then I'm gonna close brackets to finish my equation, or finish my formula, uh, and I'm gonna press enter. Okay, now what's that done is it's told me that eight is comes is the kind of 46th uh, rank um, for the occurrence rate, okay? Um, now, what, what I actually need to do at this point, and, I t um, and the reason why is I'll show you, is I need to just edit the formula slightly. If I was to drag this down, as I would, would, would want to do, so I'd have to write a formula out each time, it does it the same again. But if you look carefully, here's my original, and that's taken into case all the whole data set. If I click onto this one, ah, not only has it changed the, the, the value here, but it's also, also changed the data set it's moved everything down one and i don't want that i want the whole data set so if we go back to this first column what i need to do is i need to put in another expression put in another symbol to tell the spreadsheet what to do and that is a dollar sign so if i add a dollar sign in front of the a that tells it and a dollar sign in front of the three and I go across dollar sign in front of the a dollar sign in front of the uh, the number that's telling me to keep the row and the column value the same. But I can hit enter. Now, when I drag this down, it will keep the value the same each time. Okay, and we should be able to click on any of these, and it should say A3 to A152, A3 to 152, A3 to A152. Okay, because I've set those. So only the first number changes. Okay, so that's ranked. The occurrence now needs to do the same for the total death. So again, equals rank. 
boom, comma, I could have typed in 152, 153, it would have been quicker. Um, comma zero, close brackets. Before I press enter, I'm going to go back in and put in those dollar signs. One in front of the value, one in front of the row, one in front of the column value. Click on cell and copy that formula. So now I've done it for all of them. Okay. So what I've got now is I've got my rank for the occurrence, the number of storms that happened in a year and the number of people that died. Okay. I could do it for the total economic cost. Um, but again, using the same way. So equals rank, set the cell, set the range, hit, press zero, close the brackets. Um, but, and I can do that. Now what I need to do next do is work out the difference. So that's nice and straightforward equals rank one minus the second rank and enter so it's the difference between that value and that value is 43 again because of that as a formula I can just copy and paste that down I've got these minus numbers so that's why I need to square it so equals cell now I use the little up hat so on my keyboard top of the six um, and that tells us to the power of so now I've squared that number and again, because that was a formula, nice and quick, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Copy and paste it down. I'd want to do that for the whole, whole row. Um, let's just do it quickly. I'll just go back, and I would have normally needed to delete these. So the value, the answer I'm going to get is not going to be not going to be the right one. But again, I need to get all of these right, so I can just put those in. Okay, oh, you can see there's one without, if it hasn't got a number, it can't do the expression, so that's why we need to delete those in advance. Okay, so you can see this is a slightly longer um, statistical test for us to run, a bit more involved, but um, now we've got the, um, the the data in a way that we can use it, we need to start, we need to plug it in to our equation. So. What I'm going to do to make this easier for myself is I'm going to first of all just merge these cells. You'll see why in a minute. Then I'm going to go on this insert. I'm going to insert an image into the cell. Uh, I'm going to use this Google image search. I'm going to put in Spoon's rank equation. Spoon's rank equation. Aha, look at this. Perfect. Just what I was after. So now. I've got there the equation that I need to run. So the first thing I need to do is I need to do the sum of the different squared. So this um, sort of backwards E or sigma sign means sum of. Um, so to do that, um, equals sum, and look nice there. Uh, Google already knows that I want this data set. So we go, the sum of the, the difference squared is 290,421. Uh, okay, um, I also need to know the number of pairs. What that means is the sample size, okay? So I, I can actually just see here, but look, my bottom column is 150 and it starts at, at three, so therefore uh, I, I, could, I can look at it that way. The other way you can, you can do that, um, is I can just do it by an expression, so I can say, let's let's put it here equals count. Now that's going to do is it's going to count the number of number of values. Just the proper way to do it. Again, now if I go in and edit any of this data set, because I'm doing it all through formulas, it will update it all. Okay, so 149. That's what we're expecting. So I've got those. I can plug into my formula. Um, so I've got, I've got my D, I've got my sum of D, I've got the number of data, I think I'm ready to do my equation now, okay? So it's quite important we get this the right way and we can't pay particular attention to the brackets. Uh, I did this earlier, I got the brackets in the wrong place um, and my value was way too, uh, way too big. So first of all equals, I wanna do a value, right. And um, then I'm going to do one minus open brackets, Six 
times, which is this star sign on the eighth, be sum of the difference squared, this bracket here. Now I'm going to close that bracket. Then I need to divide that by n, which is my 149, times by n squared minus 1. So again, I need to use my brackets. So open brackets, and then I want my n. Open brackets again. n to the power of, so that's this um, symbol here, this upside down hat uh, on the 6, 2, close brackets once, close brackets twice. Oh, um, so I've missed that something there, haven't I? Go back. Minus one. Right. N to power two minus one. Yep, yep, yep. So hopefully this will work. No, we've, got, we've got, obviously got brackets in the wrong place. Um, so let's have a look. This set is closed. That is closed, what doesn't it like here? The whole thing in brackets. Unknown function A152. Okay, so it doesn't like this bit here. Divided by A152. Aha. Times. So, as you can see, very easy to get these formulas the wrong way around, but have a careful look here. Um, I probably don't actually need this set of brackets. Yeah, I don't. There we go. That's what I thought. So, I just missed out that times in the middle there, telling it to um, times n by n squared minus one. So, I can see here that my Spearman's rank is 0 0.473. Okay, so that on its own. Um, is very useful. I suppose what really what happens is um, if we've got a plus number, so if it's above zero, that means it's a positive correlation. If it's below zero, it means it's a negative correlation. So in this case, that means that there is um, a positive relationship. So the higher the number of or higher the occurrence than the number of storms in a year, the more deaths you can expect. Um, and the closer to one it is, the more the stronger that um, that relationship. So this is at 0 0.47, it's sort of somewhere in the middle. Now what we need to do with that is we need to look it up on a um, critical values table to see if we should be accepting or rejecting our statement that there is a relationship. So to do that, I go on to back onto the, the first tab here, or oh, let's copy and paste the value in, so I want that one. So for storms, uh, death and yearly occurrence we've, we've just done. I can click on this link here. It's not going to go up to 149 data sets, but we'll see how far we get. It goes up to 60. Okay. And my value is above the value quoted. So because my 0 0.4 is above this 0 0.39, what that means is I can accept with 99% certainty that there is a, a relationship between those values. Yes. 99% plus because um, it was higher than the critical value there. So there is a, it's n there is a, it is not by chance, or there is an, it is 99% accurate certainty, but it is not by chance um, that those two data sets match. Okay, so I've done it for the first one there. Good luck um, repeating it for these other three values.